So let's say that you have a dynamical system that's nonlinear, one that cannot be so easily expressed or is impossible to express in our canonical linearization, uh, linear version, where we just have the matrix A of nonlinear terms related to X. And this could be anything. This could be a nonlinear system where you have something like X1 is equal to some constant A times X1 squared. Suddenly, this is a nonlinear dynamical system because x squared, x1 squared, isn't linear, and you cannot put it into matrix form uh, correctly. Or let's say you have an interaction such that x2, and we can call this plus b x2, and let's say that x2 dot is equal to some, some constant c. Let's go back and put that as c. Some constant c times x1 and x2, right? The product of x1 and x2. This is also nonlinear because there's this interaction term. And so again, you cannot put this into standard matrix form. This doesn't mean that uh, for some of our previous ideas aren't possible. There's still, there are still mechanisms where we can, for example, find the fixed points. You can still find the fixed points of the system by setting things equal to zero and solving for x1 and x2. That will still give you fixed points. These are now fixed points of the nonlinear dynamical system. So that intuition still works. Now the question is, how do you find the stability of those fixed points? Because that, in most of the cases, are what you're really interested in. You really want to know what the fixed points are. And the behavior of the state near the fixed points. And to do that, you need to perform a stability analysis. But if you don't have it in matrix form, if you don't have the system in matrix form, how do you decompose the eigenvalues? How do you find the trace? How do you find the, the determinant so that you can use the Poincaré diagram as described before to find the stability of the fixed points? And the answer is directly, fully analytically, you cannot. Because again, the system is nonlinear. But what you can do is you can perform a linearization. If you perform a linearization, you're making an assumption, which may or may not be true, but in most cases, it turns out to be rather true, that the behavior of the system near the fixed points acts linearly. And the way we do that is we take the Jacobian of the system of equations. So what is the Jacobian? A quick review, right? The Jacobian is a matrix of all of the partials of that system with respect to all of the variables. So in this case, right, if we have our two-dimensional system of equations, uh, dynamical system, it's, it's of state two and has two variables, then this is a two by two, the Jacobian in this case is a two by two matrix, where each of these is one of the partials. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more room. And so here you would put in partial of x with the partial, partial x1 with respect to x1, right? So the equation, the differential equation, partial differential equation x1 with respect to the state variable x1. Here you would do the same thing, partial x1 with the partial of now x2. So here what we're doing is we're looking at the stability, right? The differential, how the rate of change of the differential equation x1 changes with respect to changes in x1. Similarly here, we're looking at this top equation, the rate of the changes in x1 with respect to changes in x2. What this means, uh, let's unpack now the rest of this. Partial of x2 dot over the partial of the state variable x2, and the partial of the differential equation x2. I'm oh, sorry, this should be x1. With respect to x1. Now this is all of the partials of the systems of equations. There's no other variables that are influencing the behavior of this system. This is the Jacobian. And if it was a three by if it was a three-state system, then you'd have a three by three Jacobian where you take 
the first equation and you do it with respect to x1, x2, x3. And you take the second equation, you do it x1, x2, x3. And again, partial is x3, uh, of partial of the third equation with respect to x1, x2, x3. And it just sort of grows as the dimensions increase. What you can do now is you can look at this equation and look at its eigenvalues and its uh, trace and its determinant. Only after you've plugged in the fixed point of interest to see how the system behaves if it was linear around that fixed point. And the same properties that we had from the Poincare diagram in terms of whether it's center stable or a sink or a source or a spiral all apply here as well. And just to fully walk through it, right, if we were to solve this Jacobian for this system of equations, for this differential system that we have here, dynamical system, then we would say, okay, what's the partial of x1 with respect to x1? Well, that is just 2ax1. And if we look at it with respect to x2 over here for the second term, that's just b. And then over here, we're going to look at this, and we've got cx2, and here we have c x1. And so this is our Jacobian. And so to solve the, but these are still now in terms of x1 and x2, you can see at least some of the variables are, some of the components of this matrix are. And so then to find the linearization approximation here, the first, we're just doing a first order linear approximation, that's what the Jacobian does of the partials, you then have to take the fixed point that you found, plug it in for x1, for all of the state variables, and then you can perform your analysis of stability by taking a look at the eigenvalues, looking at the trace and the determinant and the, and the discriminant to see at that fixed point or near it, small deviations, how will the system behave, at least as a first, as a first pass approximation. And that is how you perform a stability analysis for a nonlinear dynamical system.